Hello and welcome to another episode on Jewish Charlotte Mason. This is Bethany Mandel. We just finished our first week of school. And so I wanted to come on here and chat with you a little bit about how it went. The short answer is really, really well. Uh, it went a lot better than it did last year um, for a couple of reasons. One, obviously I know what I'm doing. Two, my kids know what they're doing. And three, we're using a lot easier curriculum. And when I say easy, I don't mean less rigorous. I just mean we like it better and it's working better for us. So I wanted to go through a little bit of what the last week looked like and what future weeks will look like in our homeschool so that you can get a sense of, you know, this is what a two hour, basically a day homeschool looks like for a kindergartner and a first grader. So on the screen right now um, is our weekly schedule. It is something that I put together. K1 is kid one, because I don't say my kids names on the internet. K2 is kid two. Uh, K1 is in first grade, K2 is in kindergarten. And um, and I, on there, try to do as much as possible together, and then some stuff apart because they're in different reading levels and in different math levels. So I wanted to go through a little bit of the baskets that I use. I have three different baskets. Um, so I, I'll sort of go through a little bit. Um, so that, that first block you see there is morning time, and I do that with my, Theoretically, my three kids, but sometimes my three-year-old comes and goes. And I based it on the morning time guide from A Gentle Feast. Um, you can get that um, affiliate code in the um, in the comments. Um, but I, I changed it around a good amount. So um, every day we start out with Modiani, which is just a prayer to God. Um, and then every different every day um, we do something else. Jewish related. We either read the Parsha or we read an actual segment from this, <laughs> which is um, we're reading uh, Exodus right now. So we're just going through it a little, a parak at a time, a little bit at a time. And then um, we also do um, Psalms and Proverbs, which is coming out of the Living Nach, um, this version of it. Um, so we do that Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Friday, we're just gonna go through um, the some books about the Jewish year, rather storybooks or around the Jewish year, round and round, which I've um, I've talked about in a previous episode here. Um, so that's what we'll do on Fridays. And then we're every day we're reading um, Bible memory, and I chose um, she she had Corinthians, which is Christian, so I switched it out for Devarim, um, and so we just read this every day. And um, the goal is by the end of the term, they'll have this basically memorized. So this past week, I've read it in total to them, and then um, I'll, ha I'll read it to them block by block, and I'll probably have them repeat it back to me a little bit so that they can get through um, some of the memorization. And so as much of the memorization as possible. Um, this is Devarim chapter six, by the way. That's something that we're doing every day to sort of get that in their brains. And I've talked a little bit about, it's, it's basically recitation. And I've talked a little bit about my love of recitation um, in previous episodes, but basically um, we have a lot of stuff memorized in our brains. Uh, the Cars for Kids song is the one that's in everybody's. And so I would like to have a space next to the Cars for Kids song with actual meaningful material. And so that's why I'm doing that. And then um, we're alternating Mondays and Wednesdays. We're doing a food bracha, which is I just give them a food and we talk about what the bracha, what the blessing is over that food. Um, and we have been using this book here to help us with that. It's just, I mean, like any food bracha book is fine. This is literally a board book. And, um, and we just talk about different categories of food. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're just watching a video on my Jewish learning and we've been watching the one on Shema. And so we're trying to learn the whole Shema prayer. I don't know if we'll get to it. Um, and then today on Friday, we just, I play L'cha Dodi. I just picked out a Shabbat song and we listened to it. Um, and then at the end, um, I'm still waiting on it and I'll do a video about it. Um, I'm getting a, a Talkbox box <laughs> from the company called Talkbox. And there's an affiliate code with a discount link also in the comments of this YouTube video. Um, and we're just gonna practice some conversational Hebrew with that. Um, so it's called Talkbox. I will put an affiliate code in the bottom. And actually right here as well. <laughs>
So um, every single day, the first two blocks that we, the first block that we have is language arts for my oldest and a break for my son. Um, I tried to really schedule this so that I was scheduling in breaks for my children because I noticed that my daughter was getting really burned out last year and that was a mistake that I did not want to replicate this year. And so I'm very intentionally putting in break. <laughs> so this year we are doing um, level two of the Gentle Feast language arts curriculum and it is wonderful. Really, really enjoying it. It is this right here, your gentle lessons in sight and sound. Um, the intermediate reading lessons. And it's fantastic because there's cutting out, there's pasting, there's reading, there's copy work in here as well. Um, so there's a lot of different sensory experiences that I found were lacking in the last curriculum that we were using. And I kind of forget that even though my kids are really smart, um, they still need um, kindergarten and first grade work. They still need to cut, they still need to paste, they still need to color. And so this um, this curriculum is great for that because um, they're, they're cutting and pasting, I should be showing you. So this is sounds that she cut and pasted. And, um, and then um, there, was a, there was other lessons, this was another copy, cut and paste thing. There were other lessons that she did on a chalkboard, um, she, she has given it her resounding seal of approval and I have as well. We're, we're both really enjoying it. Um, so that's what we're doing for language arts. There's also copy work in there as well. Then for the second block, um, my son, so my oldest then gets a break and my son either reads to me. Um, he is in kindergarten, but he's actually reading at probably a third or fourth grade level. And so, um, which he taught himself. I can't. I can't give you tips on how to teach your kindergartner to read at a fourth grade level. He's reading just Cam Jansen. He's reading a chapter a day to me of Cam Jansen. So that's what he's doing during his reading block. And then um, twice a week, or yeah, twice a week he's doing Hebrew. He, so we're introducing the, the Hebrew letters and he was around when his sister was doing it and he probably knows almost all of them, but um, we're still doing it. <laughs> so this is how we're starting out. We're starting out with, um, oop, it's backwards. Um, starting out with Capit, which is a pretty expensive program, um, but it, it worked nicely. Um, I'm not sure we would do it again because it was so expensive, um, but it, it does have really helpful um, ways for the kids to remember um, all of the letters. So this is the Vav and it looks like a violin stick and then they have a song for every sound and then practice. So he's reusing the book that his sister used for Hebrew. And so we're doing that. And then he's practicing, um, he's just practicing writing the letters with this book right here. And I'll link to all of this in the comments um, and the you know, show notes. And um, we're also reading two books about letters. There, it's just a really gentle way to introduce um, the letter sounds. And then sort of hearkening back to my, um, we need to do more fun kindergartnery, first grade things. Um, this workbook here, and again, I'll link it in the show notes. And it's just, you know, coloring. Like this is what kindergartners should be doing. And I'm like saying this to like, Bethany from last year like they should be coloring and circling and this is developmentally appropriate for them and so we did we're gonna do a letter a week and so this week we did Ella so that's what we're doing for Hebrew so we're spreading all of that over the course of two days and then um, we're doing a block next um, natural history and geography or music of, of some kind either singing solfa which is singing lessons and I'll, I'll link to that also here and i'll link it in the show notes of what a gentle feast suggests um or reading or um or listening to a folk song so a gentle feast um she has a spotify list of folk songs that she suggests and so we're just making our way through that um and then we're either reading geography um which we're working our way through charlotte mason's elementary geography which is on the on the Gentle Feast um, lesson plans. Um, or right now, so we're doing that for geography and then for history, 
we're currently reading um, this book about Benjamin Franklin um, by Dallaire, I can't pronounce it. Uh, these books are fantastic. They're beautifully illustrated. Um, some people say they're problematic, which they can be a little bit, but I think that problematic books are a, a way to have a conversation with your children. So anyway, beautiful, beautiful illustrations. I get them on Beautiful Feet Books. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. There's um, there's a book about George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Pocahontas, The Star, Star Spangled Banner. These authors went out of print and Beautiful Feet Books brought them back and I super highly recommend them. So that's what we're doing for history. And then cut to the next block. Um, my daughter is either doing Hebrew, Chumash, or we're reading about Jewish history and my son is getting a break. So for Hebrew, uh, my daughter did that last year. Um, she did the Caput last year and so she's doing this this year. Sarah, David, Sarah, David and you read Hebrew book one. And um, it's a great introduction to script. It's a great introduction to reading basic words like Shabbat. Um, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great next step for Hebrew reading. Um, I have a couple other resources that I use for her, but that's basically it. Um, one, and then the Jewish history book, we're gonna work our way slowly through this over the course of God only knows how long. Um, this was recommended to me on the Ani Ba'ami curriculum. It's the Jewish Charlotte Mason curriculum. Super highly recommend. There's so many resources on their, on their site. Um, that are not strictly Charlotte Mason necessarily, but there's a ton there. So if you're Jewish and homeschooling, be sure to check out their website. I'm linking to it in the show notes as well. Um, but we're just going to work our way through this. And so today we read literally just the first paragraph about Abraham and Sarah, just this right here. And then I showed her a video about ancient Mesopotamia. Bada bing, bada boom. That's all it has to be. So then the next block... Um, we're alternating breaks and math, and both of my kids are doing um, are are doing right start math. This is level A. This is kindergarten, and then uh, this is level B, first grade. And the amazing thing about it is, it feels like it's so slow going and it's so incremental, but it's incremental. And so by lesson 101 in first grade they're talking about halves and fourths and um hours on a clock is lesson 77. um truth be told i could probably put my kids together in math um but i'm always surprised at the things that i thought my son picked up when my daughter was doing math but then he has no idea like coins and hours he's like what and so i realize I can't skip him. So we're, we're alternating. Um, it's a very manipulative based curriculum. Um, so it's, it's fairly hands-on. I'm noticing though, which is really nice. First grade is a little bit more hands-off and it's like, here's a worksheet. And I'm like, yes, yes, I like that. Take, take the pressure off me a little bit. Uh, it's very abacus based. So um, right start math, super highly recommend. Um, and then the next thing um, that they both do is piano. Um, we use Hoffman Academy. I'm going to be making a video later on about the arts that we do and, um, and piano is Hoffman Academy. I love it so much during their last sale. Um, I contacted them and I said like, is, is your price ever going to be this again? And they said no. And I said, okay. And so I bought it for all four of my children, $1,200. But I love it so much that I, I knew it was working so well for my daughter and it's working so well for my son and they could not be different as far as learning. And, um, and they're both excelling and so we're doing it. Um, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you that we do um, on Fridays. Oh, two things I wanted to show you actually. So on Fridays, trying to like lighten it up a little bit at the end of the week, which I highly recommend that. Um, we have been watercoloring. So this book, there's a couple of them. This is Watercolor with Me in the Forest. There's also one in the ocean. Um, I think that she's coming out with one in the jungle or it's already out. Um, but she just gives you step-by-step -step instructions and the colors to use. And then in the book itself, and the, the pages are thick, they're watercolor pages, you watercolor it in the book. And so the question I always get is, does everyone need a book? And the answer is yes. Yeah, because you would have to copy, you would have to photocopy this onto watercolor paper 
and keep it I, I just spend the like $15 to have everyone have their own book there's so many like this this could be an entire year if not more I mean we've had this for the last year and we have the water because we also have the ocean one and so we alternate um but I, I super highly recommend these and I will link in the show notes to these books and the watercolors that we use and the paintbrushes as well um because we use special watercolor paintbrushes that I really like so the other thing that I really like about A Gentle Feast is that she recommends the kids do a narration notebook once a week. Um, the other curriculum we were using recommended a narration notebook for everything. And so we never did it, not once. Because it, there was so much in the other curriculum that we just, we didn't do things because it just, it was so crushingly overwhelming. So A Gentle Feast is gentle. She recommends you do it once. And so we did it at once and so this is obviously we only have one so far because we just finished our first week um so also in and i neglected to mention it also in the morning time um there's artist study there's poet study there's there's different feasts in the um in the morning time which that's why i highly recommend doing morning time because you can really get in the things that you think are extra but they're actually not they should be a focal point in your homeschool art music uh, poetry all of those beautiful things that make life worth living and what's amazing to me is that that stuff resonates with my children so much and so we um we're doing a poet study this term about um, henry wadsworth longfellow and so the beginning of that study is we just watched a video about him and so at the end of the week at the narration when we did narration notebook with my two kids i said choose something that like you really want to write about and you want to draw and my kindergartner decided he really wanted to talk about henry wadsworth longfellow <laughs> and so that's what he did so he wrote this i don't know if you can see it um so he thought it was really cool that henry longfellow wadsworth longfellow had a parade thrown for him on his birthday Everyone loved him so much that they threw him a parade. And so this is what my son wrote with a little bit of help. Um, I helped him spell because and birthday and helped him a little bit spell celebrated. Um, and then he drew a picture of the parade, which is really cute. And um, so this is, um, this is something that I'm really glad that we are adding to our homeschool this year. And because it's attainable, we do it. <laughs> when you like, a giant list of things that you recommend people do they just won't do them <laughs> oh we've also been doing um handy crafts um my, my son does sloyd um and we all we both we all end up doing the sloyd which is really fun is paperwork so we just use this book paper sloyd um so he made an envelope for his grandparents and i'll put that up i really like sloyd because there's a lot of different components of it that are really important um, just the cutting itself, measuring, math, um, the, the kind of uh, sensory experience of folding paper and folding it. There's, there's actually a lot there that I, I recommend it. Um, so we've been doing that. And then he's also been doing this super simple embroidery. Uh, I got it at uh, Hobby Lobby for $8. This is just like, this is what he's been working on. It's really simple embroidery. And again, I mean, it's obviously, it's... It, it's an important life skill to be able to like put a button back on or mend your clothes um, but it's also he's in kindergarten it's a sensory experience there's a lot of occupational therapists who will talk about the uh, plummeting skills in kindergartners and for I mean really just elementary school in general um, because they're always on screens and they're not getting enough of the sensory experience coloring that physical feeling of coloring on paper is is their kids are not getting it the same way they used to a pencil the way that a pencil feels versus a pen find an occupational therapist in your life and ask them if they've if they've been practicing for 10 years if they've seen a skills loss um in kindergarten kids from 10 years ago and kindergarten kids now or if you know a kindergarten teacher that has been teaching for 30 years the difference in the ability of children to cut and paste and color is being lost every single minute and it's because they're all on iPads all the time. So my children uh, have never really touched an iPad and uh, they mostly won't. 
Um, they watch a little bit of YouTube on it when we're like once a week, um, when we really need them to be quiet when we're both doing a meeting. Um, but I, I mean, I could go on and on about iPads and tablets and I hate them uh, and I hate screens. Um, but anyway, that's not what this is about. This is about embroidery. It's a good love. It's a good skill to have. So, um, so that's what our week looks like. Um, in the afternoons, we are alternating between reading out loud. Theoretically, she recommends a poetry tea time, but we've tried that before last year and it ended in disaster. My kids, it's just, we're not quite there yet. Um, but maybe we'll try it again in the winter months. I think that that will be a winter months activity. Um, and then also nature study, um, which we will um, be doing this afternoon. So that's all I have. This was a wonderful first week. I really thank you, Julie Ross of A Gentle Feast because it went beautifully. And thank you also to the women who um, have put together the Ami Ba'ami curriculum because all of the Jewish editions that you've seen here are basically at their recommendations. I'm super excited for all the Jewish holidays to start reading those books that they recommend. Um, and that's what I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe and click like and share my videos. All the things you're supposed to do. Um, until next time, thanks for watching.